Hello, today is June 15th, 2023. I'm Tony Mangino from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. On a recent episode of Staying Connected, my colleague Joe Schmidt talked to TC2's David Lee about ChatGPT and its implications for networking and communications. On today's podcast, I'm joined by Ben Fox, one of TC2's managing directors, and we are also going to have a chat about AI technologies and the ongoing implications for IT services and providers. Hey, Ben, thanks for joining me to talk about this, and welcome back to Staying Connected. Hi, Tony. Yeah, it's always very nice to be invited onto Staying Connected. So, Ben, one of the topics we wanted to talk about was BT's recent announcement of very significant job cuts, which in part, BT specifically attributed to AI. Yes, they did. And I must say that the British press was particularly imaginative in, in how that was reported with, as you can imagine, all sorts of apocalyptic predictions regarding how AI will replace workers. But actually, the reality was rather different, rather more mundane. BT had actually announced that it intends to cut a quite eye-watering 40% of its global workforce, which equates to 55,000 jobs by the end of this decade. But actually, a significant proportion of that is due to simply completing the rollout of full fibre broadband that they're doing in the UK and the rollout of 5G infrastructure, which really means that the workforce associated with all of that infrastructure work simply won't be needed anymore. It's really nothing to do with AI. But BT did explicitly associate around 10,000 of those reductions to developments in AI and the opportunity, as they put it, to use AI to be more efficient. So that's obviously still a very large number and, of course, reflects a reality that AI, like many new technologies, is going to enable some tasks to be completed by machines and software rather than by human beings. Interesting. So did BT talk about where those AI-related efficiencies would occur? They really just referred to those 10,000 reductions being, as they put it, largely in its customer service division. But of course, as David and Joe spoke about, using AI to replace customer service agents and deal with an increasing number of customer interactions is a fairly well-trodden area of automation already. You know, we're all used to chatbots for kind of rudimentary interactions and talking really clearly on calls to automated call handling. One of the current leaps forward, I think, with AI that is demonstrated by ChatGPT and other natural language models, you know, putting to one side the fact that sometimes they give completely inaccurate information, but it's the degree to which AI can interact so naturally and conversationally. And a big part of that is not just how the AI responds back to us, so it doesn't look like a scripted response to certain keywords the customer says or types, but also how the AI will far better understand what the customer is asking and therefore will, as long as it's been suitably trained and curated, be able to reply far more effectively too. So I think we're all used to treating the chatbot or indeed the kind of dreaded IVR menu with nine choices as kind of a necessary step before actually being able to speak to a human. Whereas I think as the AI gets much better, customers, all of us, will simply get much more used to dealing with the chatbot and the AI, and the AI will thus be able to resolve many more queries truly without any human interaction. Yeah, presumably, even if human intervention is required, the AI tools can make that interaction more efficient. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the AI can listen along to the conversation between a customer and a customer service agent. And based on that far better capability to actually understand the conversation that it now has, it will be able to proactively present contextual and relevant information and answers to the customer service agent far more quickly than the agent could find that information themselves. So that should shorten the call, should make the customer interaction more efficient and effective and satisfactory to the customer. But again, this type of AI assist is only as good as the content and the algorithms it's based on. So it can make wrong suggestions, for instance, but it absolutely holds massive promise. That kind of technology must also have huge applicability in IT services. Oh, it really does. And service desk support is, of course, an obvious area. So for years, service desk functions have been working hard on so-called shift left, which means resolving end user IT issues at level one, rather than needing to escalate to more experienced and expensive level two and above support engineers but also enabling users to resolve their own problems without any service desk support at all. So, for example, a lot of calls to IT service desks can be for something as simple as, you know, can you help me reset my password? And getting users to change their password without calling the service desk or via an interaction with a chatbot, you know, simply reduces calls to the service desk. and means you need less service desk resources, hence reducing the service desk costs. So just as we spoke about how AI can help customer service operations to be more efficient, the same concepts apply equally to IT service desk too. Yes, service desk is something that many companies have outsourced. It'll be interesting to see how the IT outsourcers take advantage of this. 
Yes, yeah, certainly will. And the large global systems integrators that deliver those kind of outsourced IT services to large enterprises, you know, they've always been at the forefront, I think, of these kind of things. And part of their proposition to customers is that they will deliver more effective, more efficient and lower cost services by doing things like implementing shift left, enabling end user self-service and then using automation. And I think to a large extent, the kind of AI we've been talking about simply reflects the latest developments in those areas. And of course, those areas and capabilities get scrutinized extremely carefully by customers when assessing which service provider to partner with and to outsource to. And I think the service providers, they work really hard to differentiate their services in terms of the tools and the methodologies and the capabilities to deliver those kinds of efficiencies and automation. So AI and service providers capabilities to leverage the very latest in AI developments have become a massive part of that. You know, for instance, only this week, Accenture announced a $3 billion investment in AI. And I'm sure many more announcements from other service providers will follow as they all try to demonstrate to customers that they are at the forefront of AI developments. But I think there is and there will be an awful lot of vaporware in this area. You know, we already see terms like AI and machine learning kind of liberally sprinkled throughout sales materials and proposals, simply because that's what customers want to hear. But often there isn't really anything or very much at all behind those words, or at least nothing genuinely new. So I think it's important, as always, to examine the solution behind the marketing and really press the service providers on the specific outcomes that they will commit to that are kind of enabled by AI. So Ben, Service Desk must be the tip of the iceberg for where AI will drive change in IT services. Yeah, completely agree. And it's almost perhaps one of the most exciting aspects of AI are the applications that we haven't even thought of yet. But there are plenty of applications, I think, that are already out there. So David and Joe on their podcast talked about using AI to write computer code. So large enterprises spend huge amounts of money on application development and maintenance, or also known as ADM. And a lot of that work is sourced externally from systems integrators and other providers. So the ability of systems integrators and those providers to leverage AI for coding to deliver very significant efficiencies in their delivery and indeed the cost of ADM is a huge focus for procuring ADM services and providers. But I do think a key challenge and a key question for those negotiations is how do you truly differentiate between services providers' ability to leverage AI and the promise of AI in a delivery of ADM services? And how do you contract for outcomes linked to AI versus marketing promises? It's also interesting to me, it occurs to me that there's an interesting contradiction here with inflationary software pricing. So almost all enterprises are suffering right now from their software vendors hiking prices. Inflation, the cost of technical resources is a key justification for price rises from vendors. But that clearly contradicts with this concept that AI is going to make the development and maintenance of software more efficient. Now, you could argue that these software vendors, they're just leveraging the lock-in that they have with their customers to raise prices. And of course, there's truth to that, I think. But I think it's also true that it will take software companies time to take advantage of the benefits of AI in this particular area in coding. And none of that happens overnight. But I do think that enterprise buyers should definitely be asking their software vendors, how are they going to use AI to reduce their prices in the future? Interesting. So what about cloud? I've seen a lot of talk about using AI to optimize cloud services. Right. I think out of control cloud costs, as everybody knows, are one of the top issues for CIOs at the moment. And the fact is that the, the consumption of cloud services has become so large and complicated that optimizing a huge volume and a huge array of individual services and consumption items has just become very difficult. So it's easy, I suppose, for service providers to simply say that they're going to deploy AI to fix this, but that's also often vaporware. You know, it's about looking behind the marketing, understanding the specific tools and the committed outcomes from the service provider. So there are providers and there are tools out there that use machine learning, for instance, to identify cloud cost anomalies and workload optimization opportunities. And there are other tools that claim to be able to automatically recommend reserved instances and automate cloud resizing. So the term AI ends up being used very freely in these types of propositions, of course. And I'm not sure a debate about what AI really is and whether or not these tools are true AI, that doesn't really matter, I think. I think the fact is that AI style technologies can be a very useful tool to manage cloud services and costs, but they're tools and services that still need to be, if you will, intelligently deployed and used by human beings. You don't just switch them on and your cloud services are now magically optimized. Huh, that would be great. So there seems to be really clearly a lot of risk of AI over-promising and under-delivering. Yeah, I think there is. So we've talked previously on staying connected about automation, which of course everybody now puts in the AI bucket. 
And one of the challenges with automation is the degree to which it is oversold during a sales process and then under delivered once the contract is signed. So we always strive to lock in the outcomes of the automation into the contract. So, for example, year over year pricing reductions, year over year service level performance increases. And that means that the customer receives the beneficial outcomes, whether or not the service provider actually delivers the automation. But it isn't that unusual for less automation to be achieved than promised, or certainly more slowly than promised, which ends up meaning that the service provider takes the price reductions on the chin, for instance, rather than the pricing reductions actually being enabled by efficiencies delivered through automation. And I think this simply demonstrates that contracting for the outcomes is crucial to protect the customer. It's not sufficient to simply pick the vendor with the best sales pitch on automation. And exactly the same is true and will be true with AI. It is being oversold, I think. Therefore, it's crucial to focus on the outcome that the service provider is promising via the AI. You know, if you will, AI is essentially the how and the outcome is the what. So in your negotiations and in your contract, the how is important, but the what, i.e. the outcome. So, for instance, the price at which a service is delivered or the speed at which a service is delivered is more important than the how, both for your negotiation and for the contract. Thanks very much, Ben. Very interesting discussion. AI is clearly going to affect many IT services, negotiations, and contracts, and we'll continue discussing it here on Staying Connected. And if you would like to learn more about any of the topics Ben and I covered today, or if you'd like to discuss other ICT needs with Ben or me or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues, please give us a call or shoot us an email. You can also stay current by subscribing to Staying Connected, checking out our websites, and following us on LinkedIn.